Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today I'm going to be showing you my hawthorn, which I've grown from seed. Um, I've grown these for bonsai, for turning into bonsai. Um, so it's a real simple thing to do to get these to grow from seed. Um, you'll even find them just popping up um, all over the place if you've got flower beds somewhere and you've got hawthorn bush near you, the birds will drop the seeds. Uh, but you can collect the little red berries and you can either take the seeds out or just leave them as they are and just throw them somewhere in a pot of compost or uh, a little dug over area um, and they will grow and you will get quite a few plants from only a couple of seeds so these were growing from seed these are two years old now and um, I haven't done anything to them other than chop the tops off a couple of times and keep the branches relatively small I've just cut the ends off and um, because like I said these are going to be for bonsai so uh, I don't want them getting too tall uh, but it's amazing how fast they grow and how thick they've got over just two years and um, so that's the hawthorns there's four in this pot I only decided mm. to keep four um, I had loads of them at one point but no room for them and they just spring up all over the place in the garden anyway so I figured four is fine for now so anyway what I'm going to do today uh, I'm going to be repotting these and trying to sort the roots out I, I need to untangle them because because there's four in that pot so uh, I expect the roots are probably pretty meshed together now so we need to rope the roots out and make sure they all go readily instead of wrapping around and stuff and I'm just going to put them all in a little three litre pot at the moment there's four in a ten litre pot so uh, but that, I could leave them in that pot for a good few years more and they would be fine but like I said I want to separate them because I want them to be individual trees rather than at the moment they're just clumped together and I also want to see what the roots are like so um, hopefully I haven't cut my head off in this video <laughs> Uh, I've got the wide angle lens on at the moment, so I hope it should be alright. Uh, but I'll take you over to the pot and bench, set a camera up over there, and we'll make a start on that. Okay, so here's the four thorns grown from seed. Like I said, these are two years old. And the moss and stuff's just growing on the top there. Uh, these are just planted in either compost or ordinary garden soil mixed with compost can't quite remember so hopefully the camera's all right there just move you up a bit so basically what i want to do is separate each of these and put them in their own little pot so i've got some of these three litre pots so um, they'll be ideal for them now uh, get four of them pots. Uh, but we'll sort that out later. What I need to do first, put my gloves on because these spikes on these things are pretty lethal. Uh, I know they'll go they'll probably go straight through the gloves as well, but it gives a bit of protection. The spikes on these things. Uh, if you get spiked by them, the end of it will snap off and it will be very quite deep into your skin and I had one in my hand for almost six months before before it came out uh, lucky it didn't get infected so these out of the pot to begin with it's going to be fun two person job really So this, this was just a 10 litre flower bucket which I picked up from the supermarket when they were given them away. Now uh, I just cut some big drainage holes in the bottom. So, first off we need to get some of this soil off. And see what we've got to work with here. See them, the roots in there not pot bound yet they've been in this pot for two years and they could have stayed in here for much longer see this is just ordinary garden mud 
And I have topped it up a couple of times with compost, just to give them a little feed. I haven't actually fed them plant food. I'll just uh, use some of my homemade chicken manure compost and just put a little mulch on top every now and then. So I don't know if you can see what I'm up to. I will bring you a bit closer. And I'm just gonna scrape away as much as I can to try and separate the trees. Because uh, if I just pull them, I'm gonna break too many roots. Uh, not that they'll mind, because these things are pretty indestructible. Uh, but I would like to save as many roots as I can, and that way they'll be healthier and grow better this year. So I'll bring you over. Okay, so there's a bit of a closer view for you. I don't know if you can hear that wind out there. It's absolutely blowing a hooli. Uh, we're quite high up on a hill in the middle of Wales, in the UK. So we are exposed to quite a lot of wind. Uh, but it's really windy today. I'm spilling my tea everywhere, shaking the table. <laughs> uh, I need a root break really, but I haven't got one. So what can I use? A little trowel. So I just want to get all this off. I don't need to get all of it off, but a lot of it. See the big stones and all sorts in there. It's just soil from the garden. Big chunk of clay in there as well. Uh, I do tend to, because we've got a lot of clay around, when I pot plants up, I do tend to just put clumps of it in there because uh, the clay will feed the soil. So that's literally just a lump of clay. And this is full of nutrients. And it also can help. If you don't put too much in there, just put the odd, the odd lump in there like that. Uh, it can actually help the drainage as well, because it the water will be able to run around it and it will provide some nutrients to the plants as well. Uh, it'll be like gradual release of nutrients. So just trying to separate these is gonna be quite difficult because all these roots have entangled over the couple of years. You wouldn't believe these are only two years old. That's, that's almost as thick as my finger, my little finger anyway. And um, we're not even down to the root base yet. Got some stray roots further up. Uh, I'm just going to break this soil apart. Uh, now's a good time to repot stuff. Although, a lot of these trees, as long as you don't break too many roots. You can basically do it whenever you want. That's my experience anyway. Um, I've grown a lot of trees over the years. And not very many of them have died, so must be doing something right. And I don't follow all the rules. There's a lot of, there's a lot of rules People say you have to follow repotting certain times, pruning certain times, etc. By no means do I stick to them all. I just do it as and when I feel like it. So you just got to know your trees. If you know what they can take and when they can take it, you'll be fine. Oh, 
almost tempted to yank them apart, but I feel in the middle there, they kind of start to merge together. system on that. Now I'm not going to touch the roots. Obviously I've broken quite a few probably already so I don't want to be pruning them off at the moment. So I'm just going to put these in a pot. So I'll get the rest separated. Okay so finally got them all apart. Some nice roots on there and this one's got a nice little kink in the trunk there so what I will do is remove the higher up thinner roots so that, that bit can go out of the soil that's that one okay now uh, that's all four of them separated believe it or not my camera just overheated and cut out and it's got really hot in the green up so I had the door shut to try and stop some of the wind noise uh, but I've had to open up again so that was the one I was just showing you there with the curve in it there so that one's quite cool and the other ones should be fine I don't mind straight trees I quite like them straight straight-ish So now all I've got to do is pop these up. Look at that thick root. Just a rocked one. So what I'm going to do is mix up some soil and put these in them little three litre pots. Okay, so this is the mix of soil I'm going to be using. So I'm just doing equal parts grit and shredded bark and ordinary multi-purpose compost. So that's my soil mix. Um, because they're staying in the flower pot and obviously I haven't really done any proper bonsai yet. Mine are all in plow, flower pots still. So they're all in pre-bonsai phases. So I'm still using normal soil, no bonsai soil. Anyway, so that's my mix of soil. Okay, so like I said, three litre plant pot. So I'm just going to fill it up a bit with my soil. I've mixed it all together nicely now. And this is just being out in the water butt, just so the roots don't dry out too much. So I'm going to try and keep the roots spread it outwards. Uh, this one's got a, it has got a bend in it, but for now I'm just going to pot it up straight because yeah, that saves room if I bend it if I put it in the way I want it to plant it when it was a bonzo or whatever uh, obviously it's going to take up more ground space so at the moment it's still in its training so you can think of this as a training pot I guess 
So I'm going to fill it up and put a mound in the middle so it goes underneath the roots. And then just try and tuck the roots around the edges. And I'm going to apply it up quite a bit higher than what it was on the other pot. And I'm just poking the soil into all the gaps with the nooks and crannies as I go. So I'm not too bothered because obviously this is not a bonsai pot and I'm not planting up properly yet. Anyway, it should be a lot healthier, a lot happier in this pot than what it was in this other pot crammed up with them other four trees, three trees. So I'm putting this soil in quite compact, not overly compact, but uh, the way I see it, the more soil I can fit in this pot, the less watering I'll have to do. And it should still drain well, because I've added quite a lot of grit. Uh, but these things, the Hawthorns don't care. I mean, you saw the other composites, the other soil was basically just clay, so... And then they, got, they grow in the clay over there, so they don't, obviously don't mind sitting in damp conditions. Okay, so that's the first one in its pot. And I'm just going to reduce the height a little bit. Try and zoom you out again. Okay, so I'm going to reduce the height a little bit on this. Uh, not too much, because I want it to still grow really vigorously and thicken up so I'm going to take it down find a couple of nice buds so I'll take it down to about there for now so I'm only that's the only thing I'm going to be cutting off today just the tip of it show you them spikes how sharp they are they're lethal okay so that's the first one done so I'll get the rest of them done. Okay everyone, so I finished bottling these up, the Hawthorns. So now I'm sort of wondering whether I could bend any of these. If I want to bend them it's my last opportunity because these trunks are already pretty stiff. These thinner ones aren't so bad. But that one's about quite tough so what do you reckon shall we give it a go with one I'll give it a go I'll put one on this turntable and we'll give it a go see if we can bend it okay hopefully you can still hear me it's just starting raining out there um, I found some wire. I haven't got bonsai wire. All I've got is this copper wire. This is the toughest bit of wire I can find. It's quite tough. So hopefully if I can bend it, even if I have to put two lots of wire on. So before anyone says anything, I'm completely novice when it comes to wiring and shaping trees. But I've watched a lot of videos and I've grown a lot of trees over the years successfully in pots so what I'm going to do is poke down to the soil about an inch or two and just coil it around I'm trying to keep out of the way of the camera as well so um like I said completely novice at this sort of thing so I'm just doing it best I can keeping it tight to the trunk and trying to aim for about 
I think that's 30 degree coil, something like that. as high up as it went so misjudged that a little bit but never mind now I'm probably going to have to put two on anyway so I can just take the other one up further let's see if it'll bend that's not going to bend at that holding a little bit and I put another one on and if that doesn't work then we'll just call that a fail <laughs> I've tried to make it a bit longer so I'm going to go up and following the line of the other wire as best I can anyway I want to stay as close as I can to the other one. That will knock in the bottle. <laughs> and the whole thing's trying to twist. This one's a bit better length. Actually, overjudged it a little bit on that one. Okay, so I've got two bits of wire on there. I'm trying to get some sort of bend in it. Quite pliable, so hopefully it won't snap. <sighs> I stabbed myself. These fawns on these. So there we go. And they've actually been known. The forms on these have been known to go through fuel tanks and strimmers and lawnmowers and stuff. So you've got to be really quite careful with them. It's not so much that it's painful, it's that the tips snap off and end up staying inside your skin. Yeah. That worked quite well, I think. That's quite cool, isn't it? The more I can bend it, the better. Who says you have to buy bonsai wire?
Look at that. Quite happy with it, how that worked actually. I might even try and wire these little branches out. Just give you a little close up. Okay, so we managed to get quite nice bends in that. I've gone for the standard sort of three dimensional S shape. So this is just electrical wire, the core from electrical wire, this is just copper. I think that worked pretty well. Okay, so I found some thinner copper wire and uh, I'll just put some on these four branches here. Kind of holds. And that one at the back's a bit thick, but that one's kind of going down anyway, so that's fine. So we'll see how it goes. So that one's wired up and bent into a sort of an S, and the other four have just left as they are. So I'll keep you updated on them, and we'll see how they go. Okay, everyone. So um, I think that turned out pretty well. They're all repied. Uh, I have taken another couple of inches off the top just to shorten them a little bit more and now I'm just going to let them grow this year just leave them be completely maybe give them another prune at the end of the year uh, but for now so that's all I'm going to do uh, so in the past all I've done is snipped off these I did that at the end of last year uh, it looks like I missed a couple but uh, I'll just take out the growing tips from the branches so that they fill out more Missed that one as well. Um, and I'll cut the top off and that's all I'm going to do. So I'm just going to let them settle in. I'm going to leave them in the greenhouse for now. Let them settle in, let them grow for the year. As soon as the weather warms up, I'll put them back outside for the year. Uh, so they won't be living in the greenhouse permanently. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I certainly enjoyed making it. It's actually great fun playing with trees and stuff. So, um, Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hope you all subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Uh, any questions or advice for me, leave them down below. Um, there's just a jet just about to fly across. So hopefully you can hear me quite well. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Hope you all have a great week. See you later.